Hey everyone, it's Scott from Wildlife Inspired. You can also find me on my social media or Instagram account at Eskies Images or down here on my website, eskiesimages.com. And today we're gonna talk about back button focus and how it will absolutely not make you a better wildlife photographer because there's no such thing as a magic button. This topic revolves around a story that I heard about a year ago, and it's from a friend of mine who was out in the field, and as she was shooting, somebody gave her some unsolicited advice about how to become a great wildlife photographer. And the message was, all of the good photographers use back button focus. And she asked me if I did. And I told her no. And then I proceeded to tell her that she should probably not listen to anything else that he had to say. But here's why. It wasn't that back button focus is right or wrong. It's just that in my opinion, it's not something that needs to be done. And I'm gonna explain why, and I'm also gonna explain why I don't use it. To demonstrate what back button focus is, I set up my D500 with a macro lens that's gonna actually physically be able to show the lens focusing. As I depress this shutter up front, I'm using shutter focus and it's going to focus. It's the same button that I use to release the shutter. So basically both things are being done by one button. I'm focusing and I'm hitting the shutter release. Back button focus disengages the focusing mechanism and moves it to a different button on the camera. So now we have, in this case, the back button doing the focusing and this button, the shutter release, only releasing the shutter. And the theory is that by disengaging those two, you can get more accurate focusing and not miss as many shots. So quick moving subjects, for example. Let me explain why I don't use back button focus and it's a pretty simple premise for me. Uh, first of all, I don't necessarily think that you improve your keeper rate by disengaging the focus and moving it to the back button. In fact, I think there are times where that could hurt you. Keep in mind, once you have the back button focus engaged here, you must hit your thumb every time. If your thumb is not in position and it's a quickly moving subject, by the time you get there, you could miss it. Most photographers are programmed naturally to have their finger resting on the shutter. While that's a very minor difference, that is one of the reasons, but there's a much more important reason. This thumb is incredibly critical, not just to us as photographers, but to our entire species. It's what gave us the ability to make tools. So let me show you what happens with my thumb. If I'm using back button focus, I must hit that button the whole time I wanna focus. As soon as I remove it to do anything else on my camera, focusing stops. When I'm using the shutter focus along with shutter release, I now free up my thumb to do multiple things. So here's an example of what that would look like. Because I'm now using this finger for focusing, I have the ability to change shutter, shutter speed here or if I've set my camera up for something called easy exposure compensation, I can also use that here. It also allows me to use on Nikon the joystick that's here so that I can recompose and change my focus point without having to worry about what's going on with my thumb for focusing. So that's a pretty important difference to me. The fact that I can now use my thumb to do multiple things on the back of the camera and not have it committed to just focusing. Remember, as soon as I remove my thumb from the focus button in that back button setup, I lose focusing completely. This button is only releasing the shutter. So for me, it adds more versatility. But there's a more important concept here. And it goes back to that original story about how you have to do this to be a great wildlife photographer. And the key message here is that there is no magic button. Nothing on this camera is going to make me a better photographer. Now, understanding how the camera works, absolutely. Becoming more comfortable with it, sure. But there are no magic tricks involved here. In fact, there's a couple things I'm going to list up here, and it's going to be things that you might hear that are going to make you a better wildlife photographer, but they're probably not going to make much of a difference. And when you think about this list, 
understand that these are preferences. There are no absolutes and there's nothing here that's gonna make you amazing. There are no shortcuts. Mostly what you hear is just opinion. And there are some things that will absolutely improve your photography, but these are simply preferences, just like back button focus. People that shoot Nikon or Canon or Olympus or Sony have a preference to those bodies. It doesn't make them a great wildlife photographer. In fact, putting a different brand in their hand isn't going to significantly change what they produce. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope the key concepts really came through. That it's not about those extrinsic factors that make you a great wildlife photographer. And there's really a need to determine what is opinion and what is preference versus what will actually make a difference. And we'll explore that in my next video. We're going to do five characteristics of great wildlife photographers, and I hope you tune in for that. Additionally, I hope you are following me on social media at S Keys Images. Check out my Patreon page, also S Keys Images. In there, I have exclusive videos, behind the scenes things, and also some editing tutorials that I do. And that's my subscription site, Patreon, S Keys Images. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope the key concepts came through, and as always, have a great day.